The ADF now needs stronger deterrence capabilities, capabilities that can hold potential adversaries, their forces and critical infrastructure at risk from a distance, thereby deterring an attack on Australia and helping to prevent war. Of course we can't match all the capabilities in our region. That's not the point of what we're announcing today. That is why we need to ensure our deterrence, deterrence capabilities play to our strengths. Australia will invest in longer range strike weapons, cyber capabilities and area denial. As mentioned, we're expanding our plans to acquire long range maritime and land strike capabilities and to invest in more highly integrated sensors and weapons. We will increase the Australian Defence Force's ability to influence and deny operations directed against our interests. The threshold of traditional uh, armed conflict in what experts call uh, the grey zone, which is becoming ever present and ever expanding. This will involve boosting defence's uh, special operations, intelligence and offensive cyber capabilities, as well as its presence uh, operations, um, capacity building efforts and engagement activities. $15 billion investment in cyber and information warfare capabilities says a lot about where the world is at and where the threats are coming from. And it will range across all key touch points of capability, people, platforms, technology, research. Our investments in these capabilities will enable defence to more effectively counter cyber attacks on Australia, on defence and our deployed forces. And this will be part of my government's broader investment in Australia's cyber defence's resources and capabilities. It's no secret nor have we seen to make it one, that the cyber threat landscape is evolving rapidly. And soon we will announce as a government our new cyber security strategy, building on our 2016 strategy and its $230 million investment and in incorporating our $156 million cyber security commitment from last year. It will include funding of $1.35 billion over the next decade to enhance the cyber security capabilities and assistance provided to Australians through the Australian Signals Directive, represented here today, and of course also the Australian Cyber Security Centre. The focus will extend well beyond defence capabilities, with, for example, over 31 million devoted to enhancing the ability of the ASD to disrupt cybercrime offshore, taking the fight to foreign criminals that seek to target Australians, and providing assistance to federal, state and territory law enforcement agencies. Over 12 million will go towards new strategic mitigations and active disruption options, enabling ASD and Australia's major telecommunications providers to prevent malicious cyber activity from reaching millions of Australians. And I want to thank uh, Australian industry, Australian businesses, uh, for the response uh, to my uh, statement of several weeks ago, where we alerted them to the increasing nature of cyber activity in Australia. And I'm advised by ASD the response from the business community has been extremely strong, as well as from state and territory and local governments. We appreciate that. We encourage you to continue to engage. You are joined in this great effort with us. Now, the third objective of our defence strategy update is ensuring Australia can respond to threats with credible military force when required. The strategic environment and the heightened risk of miscalculation in the region makes this a necessity. There's much more tension in the cord these days. We need an ADF that is ready now, but is also future ready. And this means streamlining our capability development and acquisition processes, as well as bolstering su supply chain security, heightened by what we've seen during the COVID-19 pandemic. Because responding credibly to threats doesn't simply come down to the ADF. It's about the system that surrounds it, supports it, the ecosystem that it is a part of. And this is the hard bit. It's about the support and structures it has to do with the job. We learned that with the health system during the pandemic, it's equally true for our defence capability. It's about Australia having what we need when we need it and the ability to provide it. And to achieve these aims, the government will invest accordingly in resilience and the ADF's ability to respond to an array of challenges at the same time. That includes investment in the logistics systems that will improve the ADF's ability 
to deploy globally and support our allies where it is in Australia's interests. And over time, we will significantly expand the ADF's guided weapons and explosive ordnance style culverts. We will modernise and reform the ADF's supply system, including expansion of its fuel holdings and deployable fuel and water systems. We will prioritise our investment in critical military infrastructure, such as the $1.6 billion upgrade to RAF Base Tyndall, where I was recently, just before the pandemic really took hold. Furthermore, the government will significantly increase investment in defence space capabilities, a whole new theatre, including a network of satellites so we have an independent communications network. And we're going to invest some $7 billion in those space capabilities over the coming decade, working closely with industry and other government agencies, including the Australian Space Agency, uh, headquartered in Adelaide, where I was there to open uh, that agency uh, not that long ago. Working with key partners and allies, we will take advantage of Australia's unique geographical position to better contribute to collective space domain awareness. And so too, we will look to enhance the ADF's ability to counter emerging threats in the space domain and ensure our continued access to space-based intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. And we'll increase our investment in Australia's technology innovation programs, partnering with defence industry, research institutions and education providers, while also rethinking how defence can better support uh, during natural disasters. The Defence of Australia is a big team effort and it goes well beyond those who wear uniforms.